at the PFL versus Bellator mega event in Saudi Arabia, Henan Fahea literally punched his ticket to a date with destiny, and he didn't waste any time doing it. The PFL heavyweight champ obliterated the Bellator champ, Ryan Bader, in just 21 seconds to secure a shot at Francis Ngannou. Problema cracked Bader with a right hand in the opening exchange and almost finished the fight immediately. Bader collapsed backward to the canvas but wasn't out, so the Brazilian rained down some hammer fists for the win. The victory marked an incredible year for Fajaya. He scored four straight victories with four straight knockouts in the PFL 2023 season, finishing the year with a first-round TKO over Dennis Gultsov to take the title. While it seems as though the champ has conquered all challengers in the PFL and Bellator, there is one man he still wants, the lineal MMA champion Francis Ngannou, who he called out immediately. Francis, where are you at? Fajaya said through an interpreter. I'm waiting for you. Let's do this. I'm the champion out here. Ngannou claimed the lineal title when he knocked out the UFC heavyweight champion, Stipe Miocic. The Cameroonian then vacated the title in search of bigger paydays and has since signed on with the PFL. The slight issue is that Ngannou also found a bigger payday in the form of a boxing debut against the lineal champion Tyson Fury. A much better than expected showing has led to a follow-up boxing bout against the former two-time unified champion Anthony Joshua with the winner getting a likely shot at the undisputed title. However, Ngannou has gone on the record saying he plans to come back to MMA before that championship opportunity comes his way. It is my intention to return to the sport. When exactly, I think depends on my fight with Joshua, said the lineal champ. I just wanted to chase my dream in boxing. Obviously, I can do both and combine them whenever the opportunity is there. I'm not done with MMA. Much to everyone's surprise, and perhaps the UFC's horror, the UFC's new heavyweight champion, John Jones, was cage-side for the event and only too happy to greet Ngannou. Jones's PFL appearance fueled the rumor fires of a potential co-promotion between the UFC and PFL to unify all the major belts at heavyweight. But Jones knows he has options, as well as obligations. The Tom Aspinall fight, that's still really massive. Francis Ngannou and I would be really massive. And Stipe Miocic, who he signed on to face later this year. My prediction is that I will beat Stipe Miocic. My prediction is that I will beat Tom Aspinall and Francis Ngannou. For now, though, the PFL's champion squashed the Bellator title. And there's an undeniable new contender for the lineal champion walking the planet. And in the other champ versus champ fight of the night, Bellator's middleweight champion, Johnny Eblen, came from behind to narrowly outpoint the PFL's champ, Impa Kasenganai. The split decision victory ensured his undefeated record remains intact, but only just. Kasenganai gave Eblen no option but to stay standing in the early goings and sent him to the mat in the second round with the heavier hands. Johnny reverted to his wrestling and Impa began to gas, which left him struggling to keep up, and it cost him the fight. Bellator fighters almost made it a clean sweep over the PFL. The Bellator champ, Jason Jackson, finished the late replacement fighter, Ray Cooper III, and Bellator's former light heavyweight champ, Vadim Nemkov, moved up to heavyweight to finish former PFL champ, Bruno Capalozza. Joel Romero also got a decision win over Tiago Santos, and the former Bellator champ, AJ McKee, cleaned up Clay Collar. Also on the card, Muhammad Ali's grandson, Biagio Ali Walsh, got his first pro win, and women's boxing goat Clarissa Shields made her triumphant return to the cage. To the UFC, Brandon Royval upset the two-time champ Brandon Moreno's Mexican homecoming. The American eked out a split decision in their rematch and in turn left the flyweight division without a definite contender for Alessandro Pantoja's title. As expected, the five-round bout was a non-stop firefight with constant, high-volume exchanges. To the delight of the home crowd, Moreno looked to be the slicker of the two in the early goings. 
but Roy Vile's output later in the bout was enough to sway two of the judges. I'm going to keep spoiling parties, Roy Vile said at the post-fight presser. At UFC 301, I'm going to fight Pantoja, and I'm going to take his belt in his hometown. We'll keep spoiling parties. Whether you agree with the decision, it was an extremely impressive showing for Roy Val, who lost a five-round title with Pantoja only two months ago. But with that bout happening so recently, the UFC may not want to run it back so soon. As for Moreno, the Mexican may be the unluckiest guy in UFC history. In his last seven fights, he scored three finishes, but also a majority decision draw and a highly contentious decision loss both in title fights to Davis and Figueredo. And now he's dropped two consecutive razor-thin split decisions. First to Pantoja, who took the belt, and then this, so Moreno can likely kiss his title rematch goodbye, at least for now. And it wasn't Mexico's night for main events. In his five-round co-main, two-time title contender Brian Ortega upset the former interim champ Yair Rodriguez with an arm triangle choke in the third round after rolling his ankle in his introduction. While Bruce Buffer announced his name, Ortega landed awkwardly while jumping in his warm-up and just had to ignore it as well as he could. Yair then pursued him mercilessly with his trademark barrage of stunning attacks, but T-City rallied with his own trademark submission game and got it done. The win marks Ortega's first fight since 2022 and his first win since 2020. After back-to-back -back losses against Alexander Volkanovsky and Rodriguez in their first encounter, followed by a serious shoulder injury, many thought Ortega's championship aspirations might have been done. With his old rival Volkanovsky losing the belt just recently to the new champ Ilya Tapuria, though, the world is waiting to see if a rematch held in Spain will be next for the new champ. If that's not the fight that happens, though, Ortega has ideas. There's some questions out there, but obviously Volk was a great champ, Ortega said. But if he decides that he does not want to fight and chill, I'm more than happy to go to Spain. Ortega's return and recovery earned him a performance bonus at Fight Night 237. The other was won by Manuel Torres for his crafty rear naked choke in the first. And Daniel Zellhuber's three-round war against Francisco Prado won them fight of the night. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.